Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caroline and if you didn't already know, I am from Norway. And in Norway, our official language is Norwegian or as we say in Norwegian, Norsk. I've spent a lot of my adult life living abroad in the US and in the UK where they speak English. And by now, I feel like my English is okay, it's definitely not perfect, but once in a while I will come across a word in English that I want to say in Norwegian <laughs> and it just doesn't work, it doesn't translate well. And I've slowly been gathering a few of these words that I wish were uh, translatable in a way and I want to share them with you. Whenever I have made a video about the Norwegian language I feel like a lot of people wanting to learn Norwegian sort of find the videos so this will be a nice little sort of crash course in Norwegian if you don't know any or if you just want to know more. <laughs> so I thought that I would just share with you some of these amazing words that sadly do not translate into English. <laughs> the first word that I wanted to share is the word Kusli. You might have heard the word hygge before and that is sort of the same thing as kusli. It's the comfy feeling a comfortable state you're in. It is like the sense of warmth very deep inside that can be created by the simplest of things. That can be sitting next to a warm fire or laughing with your friends or cooking food or reading a good book. That is like a comfortable feeling and that is what kusli is. If I was talking to someone and I asked them what did you do this weekend and they said oh I went to the beach with my friends I would say oh that's kusli because it is a cozy thing you did with your friends and it's the feeling of yeah, being together and everything's comfortable, kusli. <laughs> the next word that I wanted to mention is forelsket. The word forelsket is the feeling of euphoria when you first fall in love. You could be forelsket without being properly in love, but it's just a feeling of falling in love or liking someone. <laughs> And jumping on the love train, I have another word that is kjæreste. Now the word kjæreste would directly translate, I guess, into my dearest. If you have a kjæreste, it means that you have a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever you have, and it is a gender neutral way of describing your person you're in a relationship with. <laughs> so if I were to introduce someone that I am in a relationship with, I would use the word, so that the ad, Min kjæreste, this is my person. <laughs> I really like that we have a gender neutral term for the person you are in a relationship with. In English, the closest thing would be my partner, but it's not the same. Kjæreste is like my relationship person. <laughs> Another sort of love related word is gløydei. Directly translated, gløydei would mean I am glad for you, I care for you. In English, you would say, I love you, and that is it. You don't have like a scale of how much you like someone. So in Norwegian, I love you would be, jeg elsker deg, and that is a big word. You don't say that word unless you really, really mean it. In English, I feel like you love everything. You know, you love your friends, you love your partner, you love your pizza guy, co-workers, <laughs> whoever, you would say, I love you. And I toss the term around as well. I'm always like, love you, like whenever I say bye to someone. But glidei is a way of distinguishing what you care about a bit more. Jeg elsker deg, or I love you, is saved for the person you have romantic feelings for, while glidei is more for casual people in your life that, you know, you care a lot about, but you don't love them. <laughs> Glidei just kind of saves the ja, elsker deg, I love you to more special occasions. So the next word is the expression tak for sis. This is something I'm really upset doesn't exist in English because in Norway we use it all the time. Tak for sis just sort of translates directly into thank you for the last time I saw you. Now tak for sis you would use for people that you maybe haven't seen in a while and let's say you went to a party together ages ago and then you meet in the grocery store, you would say, oh, tak for chest. That would be your opening. It's like, hello, thank you for the last time I saw you. That was a great time. It is a really funny expression because it doesn't really have an expiration date. So if you met someone that you saw, you know, in middle school last time, you could see it still just go, tak for chest. <laughs> like I could potentially start my next video with you guys with tak for chest because that's the last time we saw each other and we had a great time. <laughs> So the next word is possibly the most important one, and it is orkerikke. <laughs> Orkerikkas. In Norway, this is like my go-to phrase, and there's no good translation for it, so I can't use it here, and it's so sad. Orkerikke would be directly translated into I don't have the energy. It is just a really honest reply if someone asks you, do you want to go to the pub after work? 
I would say orker ikke. And it is not a rude term. It would just be, I don't have the energy to do it. But in English, if someone asked me that and I would just say, I don't have the energy, it just sounds mean. <laughs> orker ikke is not rude or dismissive. It's just honest. It's just, I don't have, I, I can't right now. <laughs> I'm just too tired and I want to relax. And it doesn't raise any questions either. It's just, I don't have the energy. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I have a few food related terms which are very important as well. Now, the first one, and probably the most important one, uh, which is a big part of the Norwegian culture, utepils. As I said, this is a very important term, and it just simply means sitting outside on a sunny day drinking a beer. <laughs> Directly translated, it would be outside beer, but it's like, the, it's the whole vibe, you know? It's kosli. <laughs> it's kosli to have utepils. <laughs> Norway is so cold, so if you have the chance to have an utepils, you have an utepils. <laughs> Second food related word is pålegg. Norwegians love bread. We love packed lunches. That's our thing. <laughs> We're cool like that. We have a word which is pålegg, which is a non-descriptive word of anything you can put on bread. <laughs> I guess the closest English word to pålegg would be spread. But it's just not wide enough. Poor leg just covers everything. It can mean cheese, ham, Doritos, ketchup. It's all poor leg. Just all the things that go on bread is poor leg. <laughs> now the third and final food related word is tak for maten, which directly translated would be thank you for the food. If you ever were to find yourself at a dinner party in Norway, you have to remember to thank the host for the food they have prepared by saying tak for maten. Tak for maten is just a very simple, a term to appreciate what the person who's made you food has gone through. And if you don't use it, you are rude and you have to shadipdai, which is the next word. Shadipdai. <laughs> Someone says shadipdai to you in Norwegian, you are probably in trouble. This is a phrase usually used by someone telling you that you are making a fool out of yourself and you need to pull it together. <laughs> in a way, shadipdai could be translated into sharpen yourself up or Fix yourself or check yourself. Oh no, the sun is setting and you can see my tripod in the shadow there. Great. It's kind of annoying, but guess what I have to do? I just have to shut up my <laughs> and deal with it. A good example of the word shut up would, for example, be if you have a classroom of students making all the noise and then the teacher is like, Oi, shut up It just kind of means pull it together, get yourself together, man. <laughs> but yeah, that was just a few Norwegian words that doesn't really translate well into English. And let me know if your countries have any words like this, or if you are Norwegian, let me know some more. These are the ones I thought of <laughs> just on the spot. Languages are cool. I would love to learn more about uh, whatever language you guys speak. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, have a wonderful weekend and I will see you again very soon. Bye.